Thank you so much, Elif. Uh, technologically, it's working. <laughs> My uh, talk today is entitled Defining Tinor Provenance for the Bronze Age Mediterranean with tin and lead isotopes, which is a topic uh, somewhat nostalgic for me, uh, given the many decades of research uh, other than metals I have conducted, namely directing uh, the excavation of Alalakh and the Amuk Valley regional projects in southern Turkey, the, the bio that Elif just uh, gave you a few seconds ago. I'm very pleased to return uh, to uh, this uh, topic uh, since it is now possible to contextualize silver and tin distribution in the Bronze Age more securely within the metallurgical systems of the central Taurus. Cilicia Amanus axis. I will examine the Bronze Age sources of tin used in the production of bronze in Anatolia, ancient Turkey, and recently Central Asia. Bronze is an alloy combining copper and tin. On the left, you see a second millennium BC tin bronze sword from Tel Achana, ancient Alalakh. The blades on the right from Asantepe early third millennium levels are fabricated from arsenical copper alloy, which became less popular through time as tin became the preferred alloying material. They were exceptional metallurgists. The sword from Alalak, when analyzed with a portable X-ray fluorescence unit, revealed that it is high tin bronze of 20% tin, which gives it that slightly golden hue with ornamental elements comprised of cupro-nickel in the 10% nickel range. Why, while high tin is common at the site, Cupro-nickel is rather rare, and it seems to be for exclusively decorative purposes. At issue for over half a century has been the sources of the tin to produce the bronze. This mystery has now been recently resolved for much of the ancient Near East. To clarify this statement, I will give a summary of the three major tin sources in the Taurus Mountains, Turkey, Bolkarda and early Bronze Age Kestel mine near Nide, and Hisarjik near Kayseri. Recent analyses have provided data showing that tin production and its distribution from Bolkarda, Kestel, and Hisarjik mines have taken place at a scale not previously anticipated. Second, I will discuss a more precise location for the Central Asian tin sources, namely the Tian Shan and Altai Mountains. Third, a reassessment is presented of a case study we have done, that is the tin ingots from the Uluburun shipwreck in the 14th century BC by comprehensively integrating lead isotope analyses, trace element analyses, and tin isotopy with archaeological observations for the first time. This multifaceted faceted approach allows us to elucidate the Taurus networks from the poorly understood and parallel Central Asian tin production systems we are now set to reinterpret early, middle, and late Bronze Age trade networks, which are at least bimodal in nature. That is, two or more geographically distant source areas are in operation at the same time. These data reshape current understandings of Anatolian tin production, while providing a demonstrable link between Central Asian sources and Mediterranean markets that had previously eluded researchers. 
recent scholarship has shown that the Taurus mountain range, specifically Bokarda, tin and silver production centers, played critical roles not only in provisioning within Anatolia, but interregionally as well. The well-known East-West Assyrian trading colony commercial network has been well-defined with textual documentation, thereby tying together central Anatolia with Syro-Mesopotamia during the second millennium BC. Today, however, I will also touch upon another metal distribution system, a contemporary but ill-defined north-south exchange network operating especially along the eastern Mediterranean coast towards Egypt and even further west to the Aegean. Chronologically, my focus will be between 4000 and 1200 BC, the fluorescence of tin bronze and silver use in the ancient Near East. This exchange network operated through maritime routes as well as multi-dimensional overland caravans taking advantage of the great African rift valley that runs from the Caucasus to Malatya in Eastern Turkey through the Amuk Valley, Beka Valley, Dead Sea, and down to Egypt. 40 years ago, I began a research project aiming to characterize the sources of silver in the early Bronze Age, that is the third millennium BC, predating the Assyrian trading colony system, which had connected Ashur and Kutepe Kanish from 2000 to 1700 BC, the Middle Bronze Age. Lead isotope analysis use in archaeology was at its infancy, and very little of the ore sources in Turkey had been characterized. Source identification for the origin of silver, copper, and tin metals was relatively straightforward then. Afghanistan was said to be the source of tin. A generic Central Asia was added slightly later. Copper was invariably from Cyprus or Argani mine in Eastern Turkey, while silver was said to come from Lorien in Greece. As a corollary, Hittite and Akkadian legends also pointed to the legendary silver mountains, but the Taurus had still not been investigated. In fact, most of the clues as to intensive metal distribution networks were mostly derived from texts and not from archaeometallurgical field surveys. Speculation was rampant about where the metal came from, and published maps with arrows pointing every which way were ubiquitous. This all change started in the 1980s when field teams put on their hiking boots and began a program of surveys, excavations, and analyses of the ore bodies relevant to the ancient Near East. The central Taurus Mountains in general, and specifically Bokarda, was the first target. But the Taurus were full of surprises not the least of which were the levels of tin analyzed in its polymetallic ores. Scientists have now begun to look closer at the geology and the age of the tin deposits, which are defined by lead isotope ratios. The million square kilometers or more of the earlier generic term, quote, Central Asia, have recently become much more nuanced as this orogenic map indicates, which I will turn to later. But the notion that tin sources in Anatolia were important enough to provision the Bronze Age was met with strong resistance, and it took some time for this fact to be accepted. This attitude towards new discoveries was historically noted by Max Planck who stated, quote, a new scientific truth does not triumph by convincing its opponents and making them see the light, 
but rather because its opponents eventually die and a new generation grows up that is familiar with it, unquote. And so 40 years have passed. What do we know about silver and tin trade today? In Turkey, my colleagues and I began an archaeometallurgy project in the 1980s to characterize the lead and silver sources in the Taurus Mountains, which also dealt with the surprising trace findings of stannite tin in the polymetallic deposits. This photo is taken opposite some of the 850 silver mines mapped by the Turkish Geological Survey in the Bolkarda Valley from one of the Iron Age sites we surveyed above the famous Bulgar Maden inscription. And that inscription is right below this chasm. On the right is a photo taken as we sample one of the many outcropping veins containing stannite tin, argentiferous lead, zinc, copper and iron, that is, a natural polymetallic bronze. But producing bronze with this ore would be difficult, I was told. Later, after initial skepticism of the usefulness of stannite tin, with the help of Turkish geologists, cassiterite or easily smeltable tin oxide was documented northward along the Ejimish fault line at Kestel mine near Chamar de Nide. The tin discovery at Kestel was wildly successful and became the cover story in the journal Science. Running parallel with the instrumental analysis of the ores, the source characterization project focused next on the artifacts targeting silver and tin bronzes of the third and second millennia BC, my colleagues Hadi Özbal, Edward Sayer, Emil Joel, Bob Brill, Linus Barnes and I put together a massive database of lead isotope ratios and compositional data at the Smithsonian Institution and the then National Bureau of Standards. Production patterns began to emerge. For example, the co occurrence of silver and tin in the polymetallic deposits of the Taurus had echoes in the polymetallic artifacts produced from these ores. Case in point are the earliest high tin bronze figurines from Tel Judeida, dated to 3000 BC, and a contemporary crucible with tin bronze prills with 37% tin metal content from the same site in the Amuk Valley, the plain of Antioch, southeast of the Taurus. Not surprisingly, the lead isotope analyses of the silver helmet from the figurine in the black box confirmed a Taurus silver source in proximity to the Castel tin mine. Glimpses of the co-occurrence of silver and tin in the same artifact can be seen in exotic artifacts as well. Note the tin content in this silver torque from early Bronze Age Gotepe, the miner's village opposite Castel Mine. Silver alloy ar ar artifacts were an important coveted preciosity and silver was not only a medium of exchange in the ancient Near East, but silver artifacts were ritually charged as is evident from the Hittite relief decorated silver stag shaped vessel. Moreover, mountains were deified during the Hittite empire and later during the Neo-Hittite Iron Age. Thus, it is not surprising that King Warpalawas, mentioned in the Bulgarmaden inscription, said he gifted the mountain he called Mount Muti, or the ancient name of Bolkarda, to his vassal, wishing it to be beneficial to him. You see King Warpalawas in the Ivriz relief and the Bulgarmaden inscription to the right 
located below the chasm facing the silver mines in uh, Bokarda I showed you in the earlier slide. Taurus silver had a major impact in Western Anatolia, the Aegean and Greece as well. I present only two artifacts made of silver, the famous stag vessel from Mycenaean shaft grave four and dated even earlier, the early Bronze Age silver and gold treasure Heinrich Schliemann found at Troy on the right, both made from Taurus silver. This graph shows lead isotope analyses ratios of artifacts from our database suggesting a source in the, in the Taurus. And I thank uh, Wayne Powell for these graphs. And I'd like to say that this graph shows the best fit, but it was run against all other ore bodies as well, which I'm not going to bore you with. The sites represented here on the graph are Tarsus, Kutepe, Asher in Mesopotamia, the Mycenaean stag I already showed you, and Ajemhik. The massive site of Ajemhik is on the caravan route traveling westward from Bolkarda, and where the sampling of a Middle Bronze Age silver hoard plotted within the same source demonstrating some of the overland linkages of Taurus silver. But what were the mechanisms of trade for Taurus silver moving westward to these locations that had been revealed by the Ostype connections? Scant information exists about maritime routes this early in the Middle Bronze Age, but important research was published about overland westward caravan routes by Efe and Vasov Shahol. Overland trade in the opposite direction, eastward, was also demonstrated with lead isotope analyses, demonstrated that Taurus silver reached Ashur in northern Iraq in the third millennium BC, predating the Assyrian trading colony networks, as we saw on the previous graph. By the late 1980s, the silver mines of the Taurus were well researched and published, but the question to be asked was, where were the tin mines? Trace levels of which showed up in the Bokarda analytical programs. The niggling question of tin deposits in the Taurus prompted me to reorient my team. And one of the members of my team, Asla Özyar, is here in the audience. I thank her for her help to investigating the first tier production centers from the Bolkarda Valley northward along the Ejemish fault zone to the aforementioned Kestel mine. Together with geologists from the Turkish Geological Survey, a team of archeologists joined by members of the British Historical Mining Society, the early Bronze Age tin mine complex and the miners village Gotepe were excavated from 1988 to 1995. Kestel mine, uh, you see the map on the slide, was four kilometers long following the veins containing the highest tin content, branching in all different directions and in multiple elevations within the Nida Massive, an unexploded volcanic dome. Narrow extraction galleries were mined with fire setting, some only 60 centimeters wide using gabbro and diabase stone tools. Within these soft carvable limestones and tuff, and you see the slide of the volcanic landscape of Cappadocia with the early Christian monasteries and villages nearby in Nida, Nefshehir, and Kaisiri. The ore was cassiterite, that is tin oxide, in black and red varieties within hematite braided in quartz veins and washed out as alluvial deposits in the Kuruchai stream below Kestel mine, 
which was two kilometers away. The early Bronze Age tin miners settled on the fortified 60 hectare Gotepe Hill on the left, opposite the tin mine on the right. And I've taken this for, uh, photograph from Gotepe itself, and I show you my Jeep at the bottom of the stream for scale. At Gotepe, the miners carved semi-subterranean pit houses roofed with wattle and daub, leaving behind metallurgical toolkits in situ, demonstrating where they ground the ore into powder consistency and stored them in large storage jars and one-handled cups. We found the ore contents were carefully color-coded from purple to pink, corresponding to the amount of tin content. 5,000 groundstone tools were documented and 5,000 stemmed, sorry, 50,000 ground stone tools were documented and 5,000 stemmed from excavated contexts. The smelting technology was labor intensive using crucibles or actually bowl furnaces and blowpipes. One and a half tons of tin slagged crucibles were found at Gotepe and Castel. Sims analysis, that secondary ion mass spectrometer analysis showing the entrapped tin metal prills inside the crucible. And you can see the white areas uh, on this crucible cross section uh, indicate the tin content. We reproduced this simple bowl furnace technology uh, in experiments with the help of the Egyptians. And Brian Earl from Cornwall using homemade blowpipes and ground ore, which was found, actually found at Gotepe. Clay blowpipe nozzles were found at the excavation, as were molds for axes and chisels as well. At about 900 to 1000 degrees centigrade and after 15 minutes of blowing, we were successful in producing prills of tin metal entrapped in a glassy slag. This experiment defined the simple technology behind the first tier of a Highland tin production model after which the cast ingots or semi-processed ores got shipped to sites in the urban centers to shape into their own idiosyncratic styles of bronze weapons and tools when combined with copper. I turn now to the topic of provisioning silver and the relationship of this first tier, uh, first tier tin production complex in the Taurus to the silver sources of Bolkarda and Alada. The extensive silver mines at Alada are in the Taurus lead isotope analyses group and were never far away from the tin mines as this photo taken from on top of Gotepe, the tin miners village demonstrates. But the Taurus and its related volcanic systems held even more surprises beyond the silver sources. It is widely known in archeological circles that in the right conditions, volcanoes produce obsidian, but the unknown was that it produces tin as well. And you see a slide of the stratovolcano Argius, in fact, now known to be a major third source of Anatolian tin. A new research project was launched in collaboration with Professor Fikri Kulakola and his Kayap survey team in Kaysiri to investigate this tin source in 2015. Playing hooky from my excavation at Alalakh, I joined the team of geologists and archaeologists and began to survey this most unusual occurrence of tin at Hisarjik. How astonishing that it should be in the backyard 
of Kutepe Kanesh, 26 kilometers away, with its sophisticated caravan trade network defined by over 20,000 old Assyrian texts documenting the textiles and tin imported from an undefined source in the East and exporting Anatolian silver and gold to Ashur in Northern Mesopotamia. Amazingly, the Cassiterite tin was interspersed among a newly identified mineral, Yazganite, named after its geologist discoverer, Evren Yazgan. Yazganite is defined as a combination of arsenic, iron, and very high values of tin. And you can see the portable X-ray fluorescence analyses of the tin uh, at about 10 and a half percent. The Hisargic mines revealed evidence of extraction and show the remnants tin, iron, and arsenic oxide mineralization. We documented many galleries at Hisargic and among the surveyed mounded sites, a potential Bronze Age one called Technikayasa in proximity to the mines. Pottery from these sites span the fourth through the second millennium, including the late Bronze Age and yielded the entire metallurgical toolkit of processing ores, just like Gotepe. This begged the question of whether the Assyrian trading colony period network cut off local production at all. Our new project will test whether other local actors during the Middle Bronze Age were at play simultaneously with the Assyrian merchants after conducting new tin isotope analyses from Kutepe Kanesh which will be published in a future article. This was the state of research and articles about these Anatolian highland tin sources as of 2015 with the Hisargic announcement in antiquity. Three more publications followed, a mineralogical study of Castel Mine, a detailed lead isotope analysis study of the Uluburun Shipret Ting ingots and the Tepe excavation volume published by Instap Academic Press, which appeared in 2021. Now let's move forward to the late Bronze Age, the 14th century BC and maritime metal trade. I was approached by a group from Brooklyn College, namely, namely Wayne Powell and his colleagues who had been working with Eastern European tin sources. They suggested that it would be important to deepen the research into tin sources with new lead isotope analyses and the application of a relatively new method, tin isotope analyses done on specific samples of tin artifacts from the well-known Uluburun shipwreck off the southern coast of Turkey. Jamal Pulak, the former director of the underwater excavation, kindly gave us new samples and thus began a new arm of the research into sourcing tin in 2018. Earlier work by the Gales had already noted the lead isotope analyses overlap of some high leaded tin ingots and tin objects from the Uluburun shipwreck with the central Taurus ores. But at the time, this connection had puzzled everyone since the Taurus Hisargic second millennium BC complexes had not as yet been discovered concluding that perhaps it was the lead that was being sourced, the Taurus linkage was thus shelved. However, after the new study of these Uluburun specimens were reassessed and new lead isotope analyses and tin isotope analyses conducted, the source origins of the tin changed dramatically. Between 1984 and 1994, 
at least 117 ingots or roughly one ton of tin was raised from the late Bronze Age Ulubrun shipwreck uh, dating to 1320 BC at the latest uh, version. 68 of the 105 analyzed ingots from this side have high lead concentrations indicative of the combination contamination from non-radiogenic lead associated with lead metal or galena. The new samples and their lead isotope analyses combined with previous analyses now indicate that this lead in the tin ingots seen here in the red bubbles originated from the lead silver rich Bokarda region of the south central Taurus mountains. A second group, uh, which is these yellow uh, bubbles of approximately 35 tin ingots with lower lead content contains additional urogenic lead overlaps with the roughly 300 million years is that tin regions of Western Europe and Central Asia. So the issue there is to disentangle Western Europe and Central Asia. Based on our evidence, and uh, you will be seeing this in a forthcoming uh, article, the second source in Central Asia is most likely in the Tian Shan Mountains spanning Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, and Uzbekistan. It is finally possible to visualize the bimodal provisioning model of the Ulubrun tin ingots, not only from the South Central Taurus, but also from the Tian Shan Mountains in Central Asia, dismissing previous notions of a single source. And you see this uh, graphic of uh, the tin mine in uh, Mushistan, uh, uh, which uh, was published by uh, a, a group from Germany who extensively worked uh, on these mines. We are now working with multivariate independent statistical analyses of four variables. That is trace elements of tin, two isotopic ratios of lead, as well as tin isotopes. We have initiated collaboration with regional specialists in Bronze Age Central Asian settlements and nomad mobility patterns to determine the mechanics of how the tin from Central Asian Tian Shan and Altai sources came to be on the late Bronze Age Uluburun shipwreck. And you see a prelim preliminary shot of the battleship curves uh, in this forthcoming uh, article. Most interesting is that the tin ingots from the east are mostly, with one exception, in oxide form, whereas the ingots from the Taurus source are mixed oxide, bun, and other shapes. Archaeologically, the takeaway from this is that two sources of tin were circulating in the Eastern Mediterranean in the late Bronze Age via the Uluburun ship. The coastal cities of the Eastern Mediterranean served as important components of maritime and terrestrial distribution nodes provisioning tin originating from two geographical regions. In the Taurus, we argued in our first paper that if tin ore was being transported from the dispersed mines, such as Castel and Hisarjuk, to other locations to be processed, given its easy access to the Cilician Gates, settlements in the vicinity of Balkarda represent a natural aggregation center within a local metallurgical network, sites such as Porsuk in the Balkarda Valley could have served as markets and workshops where small scale and or seasonal miners offloaded cassiterite as well as other varieties of ore. A late Bronze Age lead 
argentiferous lead ingot mold from Corsica, and you see a photo of it on the upper right, and the, the, uh, uh, this gold colored diamond on the graph uh, yielded an isotopic match to Bolcarda provides additional evidence for metallurgical activity in this region. It is possible that small scale producers conducted preliminary smelting of ores at any of the myriad smaller settlements in the South Central Taurus Massif, and then took the product to a central market and transported them to ships. This raw material metal would have been in the form of small ingots or assortments of amorphous prills and agglomerations like I showed you at Göltepe as frequently produced in small scale smelting operations. To return to the other metal in this linked metal trade, silver, although there is an artifact sampling bias for the Bronze Age, Enough lead isotope analyses exist for silver and lead artifacts in our database to reconstruct Middle and Late Bronze Age silver distributions in a north-south maritime route from Cilicia and along the Levantine coast, west to the Aegean and south to Egypt, originating from the source area of Bokarda in the Taurus. The analyzed artifacts from these nodes of connectivity are from coastal Tarsus, Gözlükule, Alala, Ras ibn Hani, Ugarit, Sidon, Hala Sultan Tekke in Cyprus, and Abydos in Egypt. To reiterate this route, two parallel production and distribution systems appear to have been in place for silver, an overland caravan route, as well as a maritime connection. What about the archeological cognates for the merchants or agents in this trade? According to Stefania Mazzoni, these rather ugly cylinder seals called Syro Anatolian linear style and you see Ugarit above and Alalach examples, are evidence of mercantile administrators. These seals have been found from sites far in the north, such as Kutepekanesh near Kaiseri, up and down the Levantine coast and across northern Syria. Curiously, all are the seal stones and rarely sealings, but with this important door sealing exception from Talbia, ancient Tutul, which has led Mazzoni to suggest that these nails may be the official devices of the tradesmen or administrative tradesmen roaming in an interregional Middle Bronze Age commercial network separate from the Assyrian trading colony network. It certainly bears thinking about. Tying into this narrative slightly later, recently, Eshel and her colleagues in Israel have shown that during the early Iron Age, Phoenician traders exhibited a particular interest in the silver deposits of central Taurus with the hordes of both Teldor and Akko, yielding a combined total of 17 artifacts linked to Bokarda. From this production zone, tin and silver was distributed to the coast and picked up by a myriad of ships, one of which was the Uluburun, and it is possible that there were more. Oniz's survey and his investigation of the new Middle Bronze, Late Bronze I Kumluja shipwreck has provided new information as to the magnitude of this trade by plotting location of Bronze Age anchors. The Kumluja was carrying 17 pillow, four bun shaped ingots of copper and other artifacts. Dated earlier than the Uluburun, some of the in ingots had incised signs, and a preliminary analysis revealed that one of the ingots contained 1.71% tin. 
we look forward to seeing lead isotope analyses and other analyses from this exciting new group of objects. The bun or disc-shaped ingots are exciting for us working in Alalakh as well, since this shape was found in a late bronze one context by the previous excavator, Sir Leonard Woolley. The Uluburuntin ingots and their subsequent reanalyses indicate that significant volumes of tin were being produced from the remaining smaller cassiterite deposits in the South Central Taurus region. I thank the anonymous reviewer of our Journal of Archaeological Science paper who said, quote, the source or sources of tin for the Bronze Age has, one, has been one of the major issues in the archaeology of the Near East and the Eastern Mediterranean for nearly 50 years. The reviewer goes on to say, quote, the authors provide evidence that, that 208 PB ratio 204 PB do not evolve significantly after crystallization of cassiterite, which means that the value this ratio in 10 can potentially be matched to, to 208-204 ratios of sulfide minerals. They use this insight to argue successfully, in my opinion, of the reviewer, that many of the tin ingots on the Uluburun shipwreck derived from the tin sources in north central Turkey uh, that have been the subject of so much past controversy, unquote. To conclude, as the third and second millennium BC textual sources, which identify the Taurus Mountains as the legendary Silver Mountains, the people in this region would have had the skills the expertise and natural resources necessary to process tin ores, as well as provision them to various urban centers. What is new is that this is the first application of combined trace element together with lead and tin isotopic statistical analyses to mining process reconstruction and network analyses. I gratefully acknowledge the wonderful team of international scholars who are working on this exciting new sourcing project. Thank you.